Yeah, you already know what it is. It's your boy DJ Filthy Rich. Yeah, it's your boy DJ Big X. And this is the We Outside Show. Welcome to We Outside Radio. We got our special guest in the building tonight, the one and only Kwani Cash. What's happening, my guy? Man, slow motion, you're working, man. I appreciate y'all having me. I know, it's all good, man. So it's really a welcome back every time we see you because we, you kind of, we see you <laughs> and then we don't see you no more and then we see you again. So niggas really just be happy that you're back outside, man. That's why it's the We Outside show. We had to bring you on here. You know, it's like he's, he's been hibernating. <laughs> right. You know yeah. I've now, been so, grinding, though, you know. So the hibernation is over. So now you're back outside. What are we doing? Oh, uh, yeah, I just dropped my uh, new project, Ain't No Pressure. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, it's exclusively produced by myself. Oh, okay. So, mm. And it's going hard, too. I'm at, like, like 86,000 screens in a week. So, okay. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker doing good. That's right. dope. So, I, I want to touch on that immediately. The whole thing is produced by you. Yes, and for uh, two two tracks. Uh, Wizard, produced by B100, and um, Long Live Day Quan, produced by Nav Nation. Okay, dope. So, a lot of people don't talk about that. Like, we already know... Really, you a trendsetter out here. We all know that. If if you really know Atlanta history, we know the wave that you set. Appreciate it. But that's just on the artist side. I don't think enough people really talk about the production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but people know. You know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. It's one of those things. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? I don't touch a lot of the greatest artists. But well, let's talk about it, though, because we we talking to, like, as they say, we talking to a whole new generation of kids mm -hmm. that may not remember you from back in 2014, uh, from then up until now. You know what I'm saying? So... Let's just talk about it. like like let let the people know like some of the people you work with, some of the beats you did. Just kind of update them and bring them up to speed of, about you know what you do. Oh yeah, I'm um you know what I'm saying responsible. You know what I'm saying for for Soldier Boy. Okay. You know what I'm saying learning how to uh, produce or uh, do anything musically. Okay. You know what I'm saying he used to use my studio when we was kids, but uh, Future, Young Thug, uh, Ply, Sierra. You know what I'm saying you name them, I touched them. Rich on the Quan, Rich the Kid. Everybody really so. Okay. Yeah, see that's super hard. We got to respect see, I didn't know. See, I didn't even know you did something with Soldier Boy. Mr. First to do everything. So. But he did Soldier Boy first. How you do that? <laughs> um, you know, uh, we used to stay um, in Pittsburgh community. You know what I'm saying? He stayed next door to my mother and shit. So, you know what I'm saying? He used to uh, he used to do cartoons. Okay. And I used to do uh, beats. So okay. like, we used to be on the front porch, and I used to have like this little speaker thing. You know what I'm saying? Back then, you know, you had to little, use a little stereo thing and just hook up the Ajax and shit. Mm -hmm. So. I used to be making beats, so one day, bro, pulled up and asked me, like, you know what I'm saying, bro, can you teach me how to do that? And I was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And day in, day out, me and bro, over the summertime, we just work. You know what I'm saying? So, so it is true, Soldier Boy is from Atlanta. Yeah, he, it's true. He's from okay. Atlanta. Yeah. I always question that because when I first when I first <laughs> heard of heard of Soldier Boy, they was telling me he was from somewhere else. So for you to validate that, I, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take it from you that he is from Atlanta. Yeah, I'm from Atlanta for real. He's from <laughs> everywhere though, because I thought he was from uh, Compton too. <laughs> and Mr. I, he don't know where he's from. Shout out to Soldier Boy. Come on, Big Soldier, man, Big sorry, Draco. Son. That's my man. I like him. Draco. We need him on the show. So, but I know you did. Um, like I was telling Filthy, I said you know before you uh, but you know we always see you coming back and forth as far as like doing your thing, but um. Like prior to you know you, a lot of people know you from the um, uh, K Camp record Money, Money Baby. Money Baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So from that record, I seen you on on one podcast and you was talking about how and I know that record to be so big. How did you do that record and didn't make any money off that record? Um, really, it was a favor. You know what I'm saying? Just off of um, me looking at K Camp situation back in the days with the artist that he did a feature for and seeing him get uh, done wrong. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, me and you on the same boat. Right. So I just did the verse on the law, you know what I'm saying? But when I went to prison, they did the business, you know what I'm saying, without me being there. But, you know what I'm saying, me just being who I am and thinking that he'll understand as a as an artist and being burnt before, that he'll do the right thing, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So he just handled the business wrong, and I, you know what I'm saying, it's just the business part, and I missed out on it. Damn, that's a hard way to kind of take it. So is it any residuals coming to you now that you're out, now that you can kind of handle the business and the business will kind of be straightened? No, I've been I've been trying to reach out to uh, even get the percentage of the the song that I own, mm -hmm. and I still ain't had no no kind of progress or uh, even anything on it. You know what I'm saying? Can't nobody help. It seem like wow, that's crazy. So let's pause there because it's a teachable moment, right? Yeah. Um, let's say you managing an artist. You probably are. I mean, you've been out for a long time, but let's say um, you have an artist, and we got a platform right now with a lot of artists watching. What is some advice that you would give them to, so that wouldn't happen to them? Um, I say just, um, you know what I'm saying, no matter how you feel in your heart or what you're doing this music for, just make sure you square your business away at all times. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's with a friend, like, 
you know what I'm saying, family or whatever, just handle the business. Because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, that's what it's going to bar down to. It ain't going to bar down to no love or I understand. They don't understand whatever on that black and white. That's what's going. So just handle your business. So so did that kind of tag you in uh, K Camp's relationship? No, I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel no kind of way. I just, I just wish that, you know, people just just do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't, I ain't, ain't no ill intentions toward him. You know what I'm saying? I hope that he progress bigger than what he is now. Like I don't feel no kind of way about him like that. Yeah, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like just handle the business. Okay. See, a lot of times too, the the artists don't even control their own business. You know what I'm saying? Like not to say that he wasn't, but I've seen that happen a lot of times where. Artists will do songs for each other, and they be like, yo, we good. But then he be like, nah, man, my label didn't clear it, or my label didn't do the paperwork right. So a lot of times the artists don't even control their own paperwork. Yeah, but just as a, I'm saying, me being a, um, an artist and just being realistic with the record and he knowing what's going on deep down inside, he know he wasn't supposed to take 40% of nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. he took too much of the record. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't even do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I changed the name of the record, produced it down there, like, Change the beat, mm -hmm. everything like, and he still like, you know what I'm saying? But ain't no pressure. Yeah, God is good though. You know what I'm saying? You'll get it back every time somewhere, somewhere down the line. Just like the name of new project, ain't no pressure. <laughs> for sure, I'm standing on it. Like, ain't no pressure. So, and you produce most of it, so you ain't got to worry about none of that. No, for sure, <laughs> all the time though. <laughs> so let's talk about that. Let's talk about the new project. How? Did, what? What direction did you take with the new project? Um, I just went. You know what I'm saying? Motivational street music. You know what I'm saying? Just back to myself. You know what I'm saying? I always drop good music and give these folks uh, the best project that I can produce for myself. So, you know what I'm saying? I just, just stayed in my essence, you know what I'm saying? And just gave them what I feel like they needed at the time. So when you say that, I'm going to ask you a question, right? You say they needed what they needed at the time. So you, when you say what they needed, I'm assuming you you speaking up Atlanta, right? No, I'm talking about my fans just broadly, just everybody. Just everybody as a whole. need music, yeah, just musically, you know what I'm saying? Like it was time for a new Sonic, you know what I'm saying? And who the... Who to get it from besides the person who created the Sonic? So, you know what I'm saying they they eating it too. So, I know I did what I had to do. Okay. So, and, and I'm asking you, and the reason why I brought up Atlanta because you you've kind of been through a few waves here in Atlanta, and now it's a whole new type of young wave coming through right now. You kind of been a part of a few waves that been that you know that came through Atlanta. How do you feel about the youngsters and in, in this new wave of Atlanta music right now? I like it. You know what I'm saying. I, I feel like. Um, <clears throat> I feel like if they if they team up for real, you know what I'm saying, instead of like everybody being like crew, 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 if they was to like Voltron, like get together for real, like I think I think they'll do something bigger than every generation because they moving faster than us and like they're way like popular than like dudes who's just buzzing in the streets though. Like they like big, you feel what I'm saying? Like they starting like trends. So if they put all that stuff together, like it'll be amazing. See, I like that answer because I remember when um, <clears throat> somebody just posted this the other day. It probably was New Face. Shout out to New Face because he posts everything. But mm -hmm. there was a Source Awards performance that he posted from back in the day. Oh, that was you. Was that you, X? Yes. My bad. <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to Big X, <laughs> the new blogger. He's a blogger now. Uh, stop it. Yeah, so it had Bone Crusher, uh, the Young Bloods, David Banner, David Banner, and Ying, Ying Yang Twins, Little John all together performing. And I remember that era where everybody was always working together. Like I remember floating around those studios and Tip would be in there, but also it'd be two other Atlanta artists that's popping at the moment. So that unity really is a big thing, man. And I think it kind of hurt the city because we have a lot of DJ conversations, you know, we're like, man, well, who's the next artist from Atlanta to blow? And it seems like everybody's going against each other so much that they compete in instead of just building each other up. Cause it, I understand, I understand the streets, but People don't understand that together, you really are stronger together. They can yeah. get a lot more done collaborating. I'm telling you, cause it's like I'm paying attention to it. You know what I'm saying? As a, as an OG in the game. You know what I'm saying? Right. Even though I'm young, but I jumped in the game so early, so I'm an OG still. But like, ain't nothing. Nobody like been moving faster than young people. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking at these young dudes like, wow, like. Y'all done jumped over dudes who who been doing it, you know what I'm saying? For a while. Who we claim buzzing. Like, they ain't, y'all, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all, we call y'all buzzing, and y'all not even doing half of the things, but they presence on the internet is, like, humongous, and their impact on, on the young people is, like, super crazy. But it's like, how he said, it's so sectioned, all to the point where 
they can't if if they like this young person, they really can't listen to this one because they don't know if they like each other. You know what I'm saying? But right. If and it we, was to put and, it together, and we, and we had that problem too. And I and I think a lot of times when we when we put our anniversary shows together, yeah, and that kind of thing, that be our biggest obstacle is kind of like not inviting somebody that may be beefing with somebody else. And a lot of times that kind of makes it hard for us as DJs to kind of like, okay, well, we can't have him. We want him to come, but he can't come because he beefing with him. And he want to come because he hot right now, but he can't come because he beefing with somebody else. You see what I'm saying? So the beef and just the whole, that whole situation that's going on in Atlanta right now with a lot of the rappers and a lot of the behind the scenes, I think, in my opinion, is just killing the scene. Yeah, it's killing the scene, too, because it's like if – Let's say, for instance, right, if these young dudes don't do, be successful as the ones that come came before them. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's really going to be turned in. They're going to have to go at each other. Whoever be the top dog, he got to attack him. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> they, ain't gonna, they don't understand. They don't even, the young people don't even have compassion for life anymore. You know what I'm saying? They don't even understand teamwork. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, most of them ain't even growing up being a part of nothing that, have somebody to tell them to do something like football, basketball, like they just by themselves. So they really don't even know how to t play teams. You feel what I'm saying? So right. we can't blame them, but I feel like as as a, a gatekeeper in Atlanta, if you are a mm -hmm. gatekeeper and you're watching this, like put them together. You know what I'm saying? Put them together. It shouldn't be like wait till they do something super big and then try to hop on their way. Like you see what they're doing. Like, and, and then they get in the game. It ain't gonna be nothing but some some young boy activity, you know right? I mean? Like they're gonna just wash everybody away. So I say help them before it's over. Yeah, and it, and it <clears throat> see we always do that too, and we never want to sound like the old guys, but we do feel the responsibility. You know what I'm saying? We have a platform, we have influence, so we always try to give them game, whether it's on the show or New Music Monday, or even just somebody come to the club and we chopping it up with them. We try to give them that game. So it's just really just out there for who's gonna listen. Our job is just to say it, and we hope it lands on the right ears. The, the way I try to approach it, though, everybody really only understand money. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be like, yo, bro, it's messing up the bag. <laughs> Let's just be clear. Like, if you don't care about none of this and it sound like I'm preaching, okay, this is what you're doing, you're messing up the bag. Because guess what? If you can get his fans and he can get your fans and y'all collab, that's more bread. That's more bread for everybody. Like X said, it's a lot of events and concerts that we do. Yo, we've had opportunities to do some of the dopest concerts in the world as far as like what the lineup would be and we got to just break it up and bust it down and even not choose sides we don't even want to do that it's like okay damn who do we pick then and it's we can't like, have him we can't have him this is like when future do a record with, with little dirt right you know what i'm saying like we understand little dirt popping in the area and it's not hurting your fan base or his you know what i'm saying right. like so the young dudes need to look at that as a a thing you know what i'm saying okay like yeah, we in the same city. Help each other. You know what I'm saying? If your fan base and you know this man popping, just jump, jump on the record with him. Like, it'd be and, easy. and you came and you kind of came from that era where like, okay, you and K Camp was on the record, so y'all jumped on the record together. Exactly. And that was just it benefited both of you guys. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? And like a lot of the times back, even back then, when you see a little John, you seen a Bone Crusher, you seen a lot of these people that was doing records back then. They was jumping on records with each other, but it benefited the artists. Yeah, that's how it was when I came up. You know what I'm saying? Even though my first mixtape was Swamp Is All. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had everybody in a young thug, schoolie. You know what I'm saying? It was just the whole Atlanta. It didn't matter what side you was from. Everybody was on there. So it just took all of us to a broader thing. You know what I'm right. saying? It wasn't like, it wasn't no hate. See, right now, these young, they just, it's hate. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just hate each other. You know what I'm saying? There ain't no... It's just macho status, you know what I'm saying? Well it's, more, well, it's more ego, and it's and it's like I was saying the other day. It's more ego and entitlement, right. you know what I'm saying? So, but outside of that, let's get back to your music. Let's get back into the music of Corny Cash. For sure. So, um, where do you see yourself going right now? Especially like you just put out, you got. I think you just put out a new project, right? Yeah. Ain't so, no pressure. So, ain't no pressure. You just put that out. Where do you see yourself going with the new project? And the, and now that you know some of the things that you, some of the mistakes you made in the direction you want to go in now. Um, I, I feel like this project is one of them don't sleep moments. You know what I'm saying? Like my first, you know what I'm saying? The first project I put out that, that everybody got on, like, it's one of those because it's moving more rapid than anything I put out. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, people are latching on the records. Like, I actually got a DM earlier, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, boy, this song brought me the real tears. Like, I'm like, okay, I got them. You know what right. I'm saying? So, yeah, it's one of those. So, I already know, like, I ain't got nothing in front of me, man. It's only up for me, so... I'm just sitting back waiting on the time to do it. 
So I, I got a question for you. So being a, you kind of really starting over, right? Essentially, you know what I'm saying? So because you've been out so long, I know you come from the days of pressing up the CDs, like you had the Swamp Izzo mixtape. You got to press up the CDs, hand them out and all that. How do you feel about the way the game has changed since the way you came in? Do you like the whole internet wave and stream thing or do you miss kind of like the hand-to-hand organic thing? Uh, I, I feel like um it's the same. You know what I'm saying? I think the CDs are miscellaneous, but you know what I'm saying? You still have to print up flyers and CD covers to, you know what I'm saying, just to get the look out of there for people who not on the internet or people who not in tune with your following. So I, th- I still feel like it's still in the old game, but I love streaming. You know what I'm saying? I love to, to post my numbers. I love to just be able to see it <laughs> instead of just thinking it. You know what I'm saying? Just like, boy, I just gave out 10,000 CDs. Now I get to see, boy. 80,000 people don't stream this record. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's beautiful for me, but, you know what I'm saying, the money part of it bad, but, you know what I'm saying? That was really my question, because oh, remember, yeah. we could do like, hey, man, $5 CD, oh, $5 yeah. <laughs> CD, $5, hey, that's adding up. That's oh, track yeah, the money. money. the money. The money horrible on streaming, but, you know what I'm saying, the numbers are what they're looking for to bring the bag. So, yeah, just got to run them numbers up. Yeah, so you just adjusted with the times. You just get adjusted, yeah. Yeah. Got to. Yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah, you already know what it is. Your boy DJ Filthy Rich. Yeah, it's your boy DJ Big X. And we are back outside with Kwani Cash in the building. All right, so we just got into the new music. The new project is out right now. Ain't no pressure. Make sure y'all stream that because he like looking at them numbers. We run them numbers. We like them numbers. Love them. We're going to run the numbers up. (laughs) Numbers don't lie, tell you. So before the break, uh, I was asking you about just the transition of the music game from when you started to now. So I want to go back real quick to bring it forward. Back when Money Baby and all those and your first mixtape, like let's say even the Swamp Izzo mixtape, you had a lot of people on there. Like that really is a classic in the street. How did you push that project and break that project at that time? What was the process? Uh, Facebook, actually, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Facebook was like the, the theme, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody was on it, you know what I'm saying? So it was more so just just getting it out there right there. And the DJs played a super duper big part in you having music in the clubs because – you had to be hand in hand because there wasn't no way that a person can get your song unless you share the link and niggas wasn't even tech savvy like that back then. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, you'll call me or text me or something, but I'm not finna go download nothing on my laptop or do none of that. <laughs> Better pull up here with this CD so I can pull it in my Serato and, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's how I push it out. Just, you know what I'm saying? Real hard promotion in the streets too. You know what I'm saying? Word of mouth was like a, a super big part of my career. You know what I'm saying? People just hearing about it and people just putting people on it. So the reason I ask you that, because I feel like that same method works now. Do. Matter of fact, I know for a fact it does. So a lot of artists just think, okay, put it up in the streams, it's going crazy. But they forget, like, there's a million records that come out every day. And, Uh-oh. And, and, yeah, I'm not going to use X formula. But X got a, matter of fact, give them your formula, X. Well, this is my formula. The formula is this. It's 100,000 records come out a day, uh, a day right? That's 500,000 a week times four. <laughs> I'm trying to talk through my weed. Hold on. So Smoking listen. that Hershey Walker. <laughs> Retake. So listen, my formula is this. It's a hundred thousand records that come out a week, right? And then you have uh that's four hundred that's five hundred thousand dollars that's five hundred thousand records a week times four. So that's two million records a month. Mm. Right? In three months, that's six million records. In a year, that's twenty four. That's twenty four million records, right? Mm-hmm. Most of those records are what do you think? Out of that five hundred thousand that comes out a week, how many of those records do you think are rap records? Five hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so I say, I say four hundred. So I, I, I said three hundred. We'll say at least three hundred thousand of those records are are rap. Are rap records. So. If that's three hundred times three, that's nine hundred thousand records. I mean, that's times four. That'd be twelve hundred. Be like one point one point two million records in a in a month's time, right? So you do that for each month. That's a lot of records, right? For sure. So if it ever, and you know, out of those records, everybody is buying bots, everybody is buying pro- internet promotions, everybody is uploading to every platform that you can be uploaded onto with a link that can go take you to the record. But what is making your record stand out? I think it's, it's more so my, my creativity, you know what I'm saying, and and people who, who really follow me 
and know my story, like they like, wow, like I think it's more so of my perseverance. They got everybody just super in tune with everything I do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm and they just it's kinda hard to keep going after after seeing what somebody been through, seeing that we've seen so many people go through my same situation and right. fall to the wayside. So but as an artist, what do you do to get that story out, to promote that story so that story will make you stand out amongst the one point two million records that we just seen this past month? I, I try to uh you know what I'm saying, keep some some secret some secretivity to myself, you know what I'm saying, some privacy, like I don't post much, you know what I'm saying? I, I fall back from the internet and work, you know what I'm saying, like and just when I pop out, you know what I'm saying, it'd be time because everybody else been on drop. I just pop out like <laughs> I probably been a bunch of people dropping like the seventy thousand. <laughs> but so, but when you think as an artist, if if, if I'm if I'm competing for a spot amongst one point two million records that's gonna come out in a month's time, right? Do you think I should at least be on the internet at least every day? I think it's all about who you are as a person and your character and who mm-hmm. they who they who they perceive you as. You know what I'm saying? If you're a person who wanna be on there every day and that's what you've done and your following know you for that, then you gotta do that. But if your following know you for being like on some some superstar Michael Jackson shit, I think that respect. <laughs> <it. laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like you got a lot of artists and I'm not asking you from your perspective. I'm I'm saying from a from a young beginner, a guy who's really trying to get his feet wet in the game. He got his first single out, he got his first mixtape. Do you think it, it like I say, for him to stand out amongst one point two million people in a month's time? Oh, I think he should um be super creative. You know what I'm saying? Like do things that that's that's out out of out of your element of what you see your people do mm-hmm. in your circumference, you know what I'm saying? And all your peers who working like even if you're talking about the same thing, make sure your your video quality is twenty times better or and your artwork is a million times better and you know what I'm saying? Everything you do is just top top tier. Because I think now, like even with with, with the industry being the way it is now, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of it is microwave. You know what I'm saying? I can go shoot a video real quick. I can put it up online real quick. I can do a flyer real quick, and everything looks like it's just a rush situation. Nothing looks like it's really a planned out situation. So, and that's why I think a lot of times when you look at a lot of these majors and you lock, you look at a lot of people that are signed to these these major labels they actually had time because those records that they're signing, the majors are signing, they actually watched your progress over a period of time. So when you did get to that million plus uh, streaming, you got to look at it. Okay, he did actually earn a right to be signed or he actually earned a right to be in this position. Well, you got a lot of cats right now, and that's why I say the industry is really kind of, in my opinion, it's just oversaturated. You know what I'm saying? It's real oversaturated. When you're talking about 1.2 million records that come out, a, a month and we're talking about rap records yeah so that's why i push and i advocate like you got to kind of use in this game right now you got to kind of use everybody everybody plays a part into breaking a record now it's not one individual one organization that can break your record that's why i say with your plan i like how you're doing it because you know when you get ready to pop out you already have a fan base you have a following a lot of these young cats they don't have a fan base or a following that's why i was asking you because before you developed a fan base and a following you had to take certain things to do, like you said. Everybody was on Facebook, so now we're in a whole different era. So, what are the steps that our artists would take now to actually make that thing pop? We're like missing a key then. word, though. I think that what? y'all not using relationships. Like, I think with Kwani, that's what helped him because even like this interview, right? Like, we ain't seen Kwani in a minute, but it's like Kwani want to do an interview. All right, cool, yeah, because we know him. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're very familiar with you. It's hard to care about artists. Like, when it's, it's hard. It, honestly, bro, like, everybody like, yo, you know such and such? Like, I don't know that nigga, man. I, I, it's hard for me. I don't have time to listen to 1.2 million niggas. You know what I'm saying? So if somebody just popped up an overnight success, it's hard for me to care because I feel like you ain't been through nothing. You just popped up. Okay, he's here. He'll be going tomorrow because he ain't put the work in. When you see somebody grow and grow and grow, you care. Then you get invested. And to me, that's a real fan. A real fan, like, really getting invested into your career. Like, oh, man, like, when you went away, it was like, damn, Kwani went away. Kwani home. Oh, shit, Kwani's home. All right, now what? Now you just start paying attention. To anybody else, it's just like, man, who, so, yeah, all right, another nigga went to jail. Who gives a shit? <laughs> so, so, but let me ask, and, and that's another thing. I wanted to ask you that because you actually actually went you went to jail and then you came home. Sure. Like, when you came home, what was your what were your expectations when you came home knowing you had had, a, you had, had the success of Money Baby and all of that? Like, what was, like, for real, what was your... 
when I, I'm on my way home, I'm about to go home. I just had a hit record. What was your expectation? They supposed to pick him up in the Phantom and, and, and turn up with the holes in the. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, my 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 expectations. You know, what I'm saying I thought I was um, well, you know, I'm still here, so I, I can't say nothing. But you know, what I'm saying my first my first year out expectation was to to like do some extravagant shit. You know, what I'm saying like I felt like I produced the music, but I didn't I didn't understand the 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 fact of relationships, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'm just thinking, <laughs> I'm coming home and people just gonna just give me an olive branch, you know what I'm saying? Just knowing like what they did with my sound. You know I'm saying like, right. people like I'm just mm -hmm. helping them out because I know what I did, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But because you, know, you had, because outside of just Money Baby, and we talk about Money Baby, you had other songs that was rumbling in the club. Yeah, I had you know big what I'm saying? Records, yeah, big, yeah big like records. big records. Like right now, you still got records that's still being played in the club that's not. And a lot of people did still his sound. He's mm -hmm. being. Humble and respectable, which I understand, because you don't want you know like ah, he don't want to sound bitter. But I'm saying like we all know the city know like listen if you really go back and listen to Quanti stuff from back in the day, and then you listen to some of your favorite I'm talking about your favorite favorite guys, rappers your favorite guys lots of them oh. they Quanti babies Quanti baby and I got Quanti baby you know, what's so crazy remix. I have a, I have so many records you know what I'm saying with millionaires you know what I'm saying right. it's like mm. in my DM you'll be amazed at how many people just uh, say something to me, like but that's hard. Oh, but now nah, you get you going in, but they don't show me no love like on the big side. I'm right. talking about it. Have been times where Rod Wave done even got on here and and posted one of my old records. You know what I'm saying? Not no stuff that I just dropped. Talking about something you gotta go type Quentin Cash and put the song. And I'm looking at it like, whoa. You know what I'm saying like, mm -hmm. could have just gave me an olive branch right there because I know people probably like, what song is that? You know what I'm right. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm he could have just put my name on it like Shout It Hard. You know what I'm saying? But I understand. I hear, I hear a lot of him in there too, buddy. He's one of them. <laughs> nah, but shout out to all the, you know what I mean? Like, we ain't, we just keeping it real. Y'all know. Yeah. You know where you got your style from. It's not even hate. It's just like, but let's say it. He's not saying it because he's humble. So this is me. Let me look at the camera. Listen, man, all of y'all that took some sauce from the guy, just give a little sauce back. Like, give him a feature, do something with him, or just pay homage and say, hey, man, I ain't going to lie, man. Kwani, that guy, I got yeah. a lot of my flavor from him. It, ain't, it don't cost you nothing to do that. That's it don't. That's, and, I, I, and a nigga don't owe me nothing either, though. You know what I'm saying? Let me yep. just say that first. Like, That's why I said it. You ain't got to say it. No, for sure. A nigga don't <laughs> owe me nothing, but I would appreciate, you know what I'm saying, uh, anything, you know what I'm saying, just to put me there. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me try it. You know what I'm saying? Don't, you know what I'm saying? Give me a chance to fall. Yeah, man, for real. Everybody deserves an opportunity. And that's why I say if, if a lot of times if, when people get in a position, they give you an opportunity to actually – to get there, I think if they give people that chance, yeah. you never know what could happen. You know what I'm saying? I know they they scared though. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a machine. You know what I'm saying? I don't need need no producers. I don't need no engineers. None of that. Like I'm in here by myself. You know what I'm saying? So I can I can produce it right here. You know what I'm saying? Like every day. You know what I'm saying? I can get four records out myself. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. gonna sound unique. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I'm doing it all, pressing these keys. Making these beats like it's all me for real. You know what I'm saying? Bro, he taught Soldier Boy how to make beats. Yeah, I, really I didn't know. even know that. No, nah, for real. Like, it's a, it's a video. Like, what he's saying, like, it wouldn't be no him. Like, it wouldn't be no Soldier Boy without Quan. Like, so Soldier, at least he did that. He did it right. He's, he he shouted you out. We was young, you know. What I'm saying, we were kids. I'm talking about. He's <laughs> about right right I, now. I, do he, it now. Even when he even when he took the fall, like people didn't pay attention. Like, I produced that that Juice mixtape. That put him back. I did that whole tape too. Oh yeah, yeah. I did that whole thing and his single. I did that too. Yeah, we we gonna need you to get a little bit louder, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. So listen, let me ask you this: too. Um, what, what do you? What <laughs> this nigga resume, bro. So True. what do you? So what do you think is the biggest misconception of Corny Cash? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. I'm asking you because <laughs> it's like I was telling you. You know, I was telling you like before. You know, before we came on the air. I was saying, like, you know, I know about the shooting that happened, like, vaguely. I don't really know exactly what happened. And then you went to jail, then you got out, yeah. and then now you're doing records, and you kind of left, a, a, like, a space there, like, where you can kind of, like, fill in the blank. Yeah, you know, more, it's more so, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they know, you know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. And it, it's, it's, like, it's heartbreaking, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. for people to even try to even slander me with it, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you see what's going on now, like you'll never see me do nothing like that. You right. Know what I'm saying? Like and no paperwork, no nothing like I did my time, you know what I'm saying? Like and I'm still going. You know right. What I'm so with everything that's going on now with the Rico and, and a lot of that stuff you see going on with the rappers now, what do you think music need to go in Atlanta right now, especially with all the allegations that were, that was made toward the gang violence mm -hmm. and a lot of the stuff that's going on in the city? 
I don't know. We gotta wait and see. Cause I, I really think this one crew gonna gonna fuck fuck the city up. You know, so I don't think people gonna really, you know, what I'm saying, look at us the same if something happened to Thug. You know, what I'm saying, Thug gotta come home and and clear it up for us to even probably even move forward in the rap game. You know what I'm saying that's a that's a big knife in the city right there. That's a big knife in the city. Okay, I'll take. I, I, w- I want to say that, but I still think you still got a lot of artists out here that are still moving. I think his I think his movement was real strong, but I still think it's other elements of the city that was just the you know the culture here is just so it's it's big. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's big. But then you got to look at you know what I'm saying you're a DJ. You know what I'm saying? Look at your playlist and what you're really playing. I've been in a club too. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like it's like we got like it's like gonna be three, a lot missing. We got like three records. You know what I'm saying? Three artists. You know what I'm right. saying? Like who 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 getting main spins in the club everybody right. else they from from memphis somewhere you know what i'm saying right. so it's like i'm watching this stuff like wow and that's and that's why i wanted to have you on because i know you kind of represent from that era up until now too right. so and, and just to get your perspective of you actually watching it in real time you know what if I'm saying? thug was to get some time you know what i'm saying like if he, if he get five years you know what i'm saying he got blessed you know what i'm saying seven years ten years he got blessed i don't want to see them niggas get no time but if thug get 20 or some some bigger shit like how you know what I'm saying like how can the city even you know what I'm saying we ain't gonna be able to it's gonna be kind of hard you know what I'm saying? cause you've been in that you've been in that seat as a rapper like in the hot seat and know what it's like to sit in that courtroom and know man I got a hit record on the radio I got everything to look forward to and man I'm sitting in the courtroom right now yes and and and, and him and Lucci's situation is way different from mine cause I was still on the grind, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't feel nothing, no private jets, no no big concerts mm-hmm. with 60,000 people. Right. No no foreign whips and none of that, you know what I'm saying? So to get pulled away from millions of dollars, like taking care of everybody. Right. I can only imagine, like, the feeling that they feel because I felt some type of way just from taking care of my little circle, you know what I'm saying? Right. So them having all these bills and trips and private, oh, my God, like. Mm. Yeah. I, and then I, on top of that, the people that you – Look out for yeah, it. Yeah, people you look out for your mama, your children. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like, I'm glad I took my fall early. You know what I'm saying like, oh we. It's like, the comeback though. Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah. It's the comeback. Yeah, <laughs> the comeback is strong, sure man. Got to go hard, right? Yeah. So, so between then and now, what do you see that's been been so different? Like, especially moving as a rapper out here now, because I like I said, you can, you've been around like for that for when you was there around when Thug and all those guys first started. So, sure. what do you see different about the Atlanta scene, like from then? Um, I, I think it's um, it, it's it's not, it, it's it's serious. It's more serious now. It like. Back then, it was more fun. You know what I'm saying? You knew that nine times out of ten, you probably get into a fight. Like now, it's like everything is strictly business. If you go into a club, you got to get up out of there. I'm saying no more lollygagging and none of that because mm. they ain't they ain't showing they ain't got no compassion for for who you are no more. So you just can't pull up in the club like we used to do back in the day and sit in the DJ booth and hang out. Yeah, you can do it, yeah. but you got to hurry up. You know what I'm saying? You spend time <laughs> where you can come in the club and get drunk and. They'll help you out. You know what I'm right. saying? Everybody, nah, bro, let bro get in the car, bro. You get home and say, nah, but what? <laughs> let them see you doing any kind of staggering. They probably yeah. kill your mama, too, if she in there. Like, they ain't got no compassion. And that's the thing for me, especially for the city of Atlanta, because it was known for, like, love. People moved down here because it was a party city. Exactly. It was like, yo, I'm coming to Atlanta. We're going to kick it. They got the best girls, the best parties, everybody. It's like a black, what what do you call it? Like Wakanda, for real. Like, sure. everybody was helping each other, building each other up. Helping each other, supporting each other, businesses, and it, that we lost that. That was like since COVID, though, in my opinion. I think. Nah, that ain't COVID, man. These young niggas is wild. <laughs> they got shit to do with COVID. Hey, I came home. I came home. <laughs> when I came home, COVID. I seen a difference. Like, they ain't. They ain't the same. You know what, what year you came home? Uh, Two thousand nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. So, damn. What was that around COVID? Yeah, that was like right before COVID. Yeah, COVID happened like twenty. Twenty, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now nah, they March, were tripping before that though. They they shut the city down March twenty, but COVID happened like December, January, like yep, November, exactly. December nineteen. Yeah, yeah, but they, you know, it's that's wild. Why, that's why I say every since like when they shut the city down and people w- and a lot of people in Atlanta was open, mm-hmm. everybody came to Atlanta. <laughs> you got to remember, yeah. the, the nation was closed. We opened first. Atlanta was, no, Atlanta never closed. Yeah, we did. We, we did closed. like a month. I think we did like 30 <laughs> we did, days. Yeah, we did like 30 <laughs> days and we was back <laughs> open. You know what I'm saying? This is. So, I know. I remember yeah. the uh, the owner of my club called me like, hey, man, look, you want to work? Come on, man. And it was Hell crazy yeah. because me and Funky was out the whole time doing COVID. We never wore masks. 
and we was like, yo, like we never had on the mask. We was having full fledged New Music Monday. <laughs> yes. I was with you. <laughs> with, with no mask. <laughs> we gotta get this money, man. Ain't nobody care about that shit, man. We gotta eat. <laughs> See, when you a DJ, you don't work, you don't get paid. Yeah, you know, ain't you no time hey, off paid you, days off. You don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> yeah, it's straight up. So we was like, listen, man, let's keep it going. Go ahead, keep the party going. So getting back to the music again real quick, and I wanted to ask you this before we, before we get out of here. Um, I can't remember. When you first came out, were you independent? Yeah, I always been independent. So you still, and you still independent still, now? Yeah, yeah. I always been doing it by myself. You know what I'm saying? I had um, I had a management um team, uh, GME, mm -hmm. uh, in the H Entertainment. Yeah, that was my boy, uh, GME. What was my man over there? Uh, oh. Pops and West. West, that was my guy, West. Yeah, them boys. Yeah, yeah. They um, you know what I'm saying? They helped me out with the uh, Don't Sleep Project. Okay. Yeah. Wait. So let's talk about that. So what makes you choose? I because I love independence more than anybody. What What made you choose the independent route and never go with the majors? Um, I I, I it's just I guess the universe shows this for me because if a major come at me with any kind of money, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I understand the machine, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay to be grinding for seven, eight years, but if these folks sign you, you got the music that you say you got, boy, one button, you out of here, like, for real, like, worldwide, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Just, so let me ask you this. This this is the question I want to ask you because I'm going to start asking a lot of artists this question, too. A million dollars in cash or a million dollars in promotions? Mm. But what's the back end? You know, ain't no back end. There's a million dollars in cash or a million dollars in promotion? Like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take five and do do my own promotion, do the same thing, whatever you thought you were gonna do. Okay. I'm gonna Figure take that now. Now you gotta understand now, if you don't do that, the likelihood of your success is 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 minimal. But now if you took that million dollars in promotion, it was almost pretty much a guaranteed situation of success. Oh yeah, I'll take it then. If it's a guarantee. I mean, how could you fail with a million dollars worth of promotions? What if it's the wrong kind? It ain't no such thing as the wrong kind. Yes, it is. Tell me what is the wrong kind of promotion. So say for instance, right? Right. These folk put you, they put you in a, they give you this million dollars <laughs> worth of promotion, but they want you to, to change. You know what I'm saying? They put you in a uh, Teletubby suit. Yeah, they want you to, well, you got to do this now. You know what I'm saying? We gonna we want to promote this. Now but I mean, we're going we gonna, to we gonna keep it in, in the terms of in keeping your integrity, too, as an artist, right? But I'm just saying, it, for me, and I and I may I may be telling this story wrong, you know, and I, and <laughs> it, it, uh, don't hold me to this, to this. I just remember back in the day, I think Chris Lover, not Chris Lover Lover, but Ludacris had an opportunity to sign with a bigger label and get more money, or he could have signed with Def Jam, which was at the time, which was like one of the number one rap labels in the country, and they was giving less money. But this deal over here was worth a lot more money. He took the lesser deal, which was Def Jam, and he had a longer career. Had he took that deal with the money, we might not know Chris Love. I mean, no, Ludacris, you see what I'm saying? I think he just, I think he chose that for the team, you know what I'm saying, the people who was over there at the time. I don't think. If it was any, if he would have tried with another company, he would have took the, the rest of the money because Ludacris music was phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? You, they but he could have did that. At, but he could have did that. At, and what I'm saying, any artist could do that if the music is there. Like yeah, but, if, if the music is there and the team is correct, yeah. the likelihood of your success is for sure is there. You get what I'm saying? No doubt. But if you got a million dollars worth of promotions and you know your team is inadequate. Then you know you're gonna struggle. Yeah, you're gonna struggle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then now you now if you just take the money and you gotta spend that five hundred thousand or that million dollars in promotions, you gotta actually know who to spend that half a million dollars with. One mistake within spending that half a million dollars could cost you everything. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Right, wrong mistake. Wrong mistake. I miss you. So, too. That's the traps of the game too, though, because <laughs> you said how much money? A million dollars. A million dollars. Even with a million dollars, you could still mess up because you don't know who to spend the money with. Yeah. The music business, bro, it's crazy. It's and, crazy. That, and that's why. That's why I say you gotta. I, I would, for me, I would probably lean more toward a million dollars in promotions than I would a million dollars in cash. I would take the promotion too because you're you build a brand. Once you have a brand, you should be able to eat forever. If you're that's smart. what I'm saying. If you already got a fan base, right? And, and they give you a million dollars. If you if you know what these people like already, you already know how to amplify. What yeah, but you done. said, but you the key word you said, if you already got a fan base, right? If you don't have a fan base, 
You better take that promotion. Thank you. That's yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> if you ain't got no fan base, yeah, of course, take the million dollar promotion. And if you if your fan base kind of kind of struggling too, yeah, take the promotion too. But if you know what they want and you you done done it before, yeah, take the million. If it ain't no back ends on, it ain't no ain't nothing coming behind it. Cause if it don't work, these folks they don't like your music. That million dollar promotion I, just over. Cause I ask that question all the time. Cause they always had the meme that was like five hundred thousand in cash. Dinner with Jay Z. Uh, dinner with Jay Z. And a lot of dudes was going to take a dinner with Jay-Z. And I'm like, nah, I'm going to take that 500000 Exactly. So, Jay-Z will see me at the party because I'm, I'm popping. Backstage ticket, I bet you you checked my hand. Right. Man. So They're going to tell you, oh, yeah, he, he told the 500000 <laughs> <laughs> I bought a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> sure. All right, so um, before we wrap it up, I, w- I want to talk about the project one more time. Do you, What are some highlights off the project, like some standout joints that you know you think people will definitely gravitate to first? Uh, accountability, um, it's a record, it's the outro, you know what I'm saying, it's produced by myself, you know what I'm saying, it's like, they, I don't know, it's, it's different, man, like, I didn't think that song was gonna be like the biggest song out of the project, but it, it's one of the ones, though, that sound, but that's one of them highlights, like, I want people to really go go tune in to it, because I ain't paying attention to it to now, like, I'm listening to it, like, okay, I'm really talking on that, you know, mm-hmm. I'm really, like, saying some stuff on that thing, so go check that out. Okay, accountability. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Well, Quanti Cash is in the building. We outside show. We appreciate you coming through, bro. I appreciate y'all too, man. For hey, sure. man. Once again, plug your project. Let them know where to get it, what it's called. Yeah, man. Go follow me on Instagram at Quanti underscore cash and go get my project. Uh, it's on all pl- platforms called Ain't No Pressure, man. Yeah. All right, all right man. Bro. The one and only Quanti Cash. Ain't No Pressure out right now. The We Outside show. We'll see y'all next time. We out. Peace.